This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jim Schaller. Welcome, good neighbors, to episode number 54 of the Good Neighbor Podcast, to Sterile. Today we have good neighbor Angela Katz from Lark. Angela, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's good to get to know people here in the community, and that's what we want to do today is learn a little bit about what you do. Wonderful. So why don't we just jump right in, and why don't you share us, uh, share a little bit about what Lark does here in the community? I'd love to. Thank you. So LARC is the Lee Association for Remarkable Citizens, and we are a training center for individuals with intellectual, developmental, and other disabilities. And we provide an array of programs to, uh, to support individuals and in just helping them to maximize their full potential to help them live their best life. So uh, it's a really awesome work, and it's a wonderful organization. We're 70 years old, so we've been in the community a really long time and look forward to continuing to serve our community in this capacity for many years to come. I love it. I love it. Now, how did how did you get involved with, with Lark? Well, I actually, um, in 2011, I retired from a 17-year career in corporate America and was working with uh, another nonprofit part-time and doing volunteer work and left that career um, goodness, in 2015 to uh, be a consultant for nonprofits. I had a passion to help as many as I could. So I didn't want to necessarily just work for one. I wanted to help them all. And so I started uh, consulting and that is what led me to LARC. And after working with LARC uh, for almost a couple years, um, the, the opportunity was presented to me to to come on staff and it was it was really interesting because my husband said I thought you weren't going to just work for one anymore <laughs> um, but I tell you this population is so so amazing and the work that we do is so rewarding that I was hooked and I just wanted to be their voice I wanted to be their advocate I wanted to do anything and everything I could to um, help educate our community and help them to uh, again just achieve their full potential and live their best life so here I am I love it. I love it. And it's, it's what it is about making the community together, you know, better as a whole, you know, every individual within it. Um, and I love that people like you are, are out there doing that. Now, are there any maybe um, along our journey, we've always had some type of challenge, I want to say. Is there, is there anything maybe in your personal journey or maybe the journey of LARC that, that's been kind of a, a challenge that maybe we've overcome and we've become better because of it? Um, I would I would say that probably from a personal uh, perspective, um, I was a single mom and raising two young girls by myself, and there were certainly lots of challenges um, with that. Working multiple jobs, um, it certainly uh, helps you. Uh, to understand your limits and in your in your goals and in your dreams, um, but I, I would say that through that experience, um, don't let the reason why you're doing something stop you or be the excuse as to why you don't. So overcoming that, I you know had to you know look at say okay I'm doing this for my children, but I couldn't use my children as an excuse as to why I couldn't grow and work and and to uh, move up you know into a, a corporate position and things of that nature. So definitely. Definitely um, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication and uh, prioritizing and in keeping things, you know, those priorities straight as you're as you're working in um, whatever field you are and whatever goals you are, are doing. And so that has stayed with me um, forever. And I think it stayed with my children watching that example as well. I love that. I love it. I love it. Now, are, are there any myths or maybe misconceptions within the industry um, or what you guys do that maybe we could kind of bust or clear up for our mm -hmm. listeners? That'd be great. Um, yeah. I think that one of the things is that if you, if you, if you're not, if you haven't worked alongside or known or been touched by uh, an individual with unique abilities, you may not really be able to understand the value that they really bring. And I think that we all have 
strengths and weaknesses, right? So, but in a, in a neurotypical person, we wouldn't call it a disability if it was a weakness, yet we would refer to that in, in this situation. And, and I think that they are have their own capabilities and abilities as well. So the myth, I would say, is think that these individuals can't have the same quality of life that we do, or maybe they don't have the same goals or aspirations that we do, and that they're not capable. And they're sometimes they're way more capable than uh, you or I. And I think that just by understanding um, what those services are, what we are actually doing, what we are accomplishing through the services gives you, I think, gives the community a greater appreciation for the population as a whole. I think that, um, you know, everything we do here is to provide the training, support and resources they need that maximize their independence and employment success. And we have individuals who own their own homes, own their own condos, uh, you know, drive, navigate the community. They just want to work, live and play just like all of us. So I think just understanding what the resources are and how they help the individuals, um, again, achieve the same goals like we have and, and become productive, very uh, enthusiastic community members. We love it. And we love that. Now, are there other I would say programs or services that kind of, you know, stand out for what you guys do or what you provide. Yeah. So thanks for asking. We we provide adult day training. So uh, individuals would step into our programs typically when they would transition out of high school. And that could be 21, 22 years old. So they might step into an adult day training program that provides that training, you know, Monday through Friday. Um, some individuals might attend five days a week, some two days a week. It just depends um, just to get the training they need. Some some would definitely be able to transition out to the community and be very independent, while others might need this type of support their entire life. Um, we also offer community support services, um, which really supports individuals who are already working and living independently in the community. So we're helping them um, get their jobs and, and, and train and, and work with their employers so, so that they it's successful for both of them. We help make sure that they're living safely in the community and, and, and doing all of the right things and going to the doctor and you know having some financial oversight and things of that nature to keep them against safe and independent. We have youth program services, and then we have residential homes where individuals live in our care, and some of them have family who can no longer care for them. Some have no family, and some have families that don't want to care for them. So we become their family, and they live in our homes, and and uh, we provide that, again, that same level of independence and quality of life that anybody would deserve. Perfect. Perfect. Now, are there are there certain things that maybe our, our listeners are, are would be able to do to help, or maybe whether it's a business, whether it's an individual, um, or, or they know people that that need need care or help? Yeah, if they if they know somebody who needs services, we definitely would recommend them to reach out to us. I think from a business perspective, I mean, there's always, of course, we have ways to get involved. Uh, volunteer projects, you know, of course, we do we do events. So, you know, if somebody has a, a business that they'd like to contribute, you know, maybe you know an item or even a service. We have partners that that become a mission partner and can provide their services um, for a no cost or at a discounted rate to help the nonprofit. And those are great ways. But I would say, really, as a business, being willing to open them themselves up to a diversified workforce. The individuals that we work with are going to be the most loyal, enthusiastic, um, reliable employees you'll ever have. So, you know, you hear about businesses struggling for good employees. I would recommend if, if there are businesses out there that are looking for good employees to reach out to us and would, and we job match. And again, they are um, some of the most wonderful workers and it changes the workforce. It changes the culture of, of the, of the business. And um, I would say definitely to consider diversifying uh, the, the workforce with uh, unique, you know, individuals with unique abilities. I love that. I love it. You know, and, and again, it's all about making the community better as a whole. Um, is, there, is there one thing maybe you wish our listeners knew about LARC that maybe they, they don't know? 
Well, you know what? I think that I, I think that when people support a nonprofit or an organization like Lark, I think we do it because we want to we want to make an impact. We we want to solve a problem, and we want to know that our time, our talents, our treasures, all of the things we're giving is doing just that. So what I would say is that we see incredible impact every single day. Every single day, we're seeing progress. We're seeing success, um, and in it, in every individual, it, it could be completely different. Um, um, so I would I would definitely say that when when you support Lark, you would know that you are giving a hand up and you're you are creating greater independence. We have a lot of individuals who might transition as younger adults and then be able to be very independent for a long time with some of that community oversight that I mentioned earlier. But then as an older adult, as they age, they'll have to step back in and they'll need these programs again. So I mentioned, you know, we were 70 years old. We have an individual who started when we were a school. That's how Lark started in 1954. And as a young adult, he was a little bit more independent, lived, you know, in a supported living environment, worked in the community. And now he's 80. And he's wow. back in our day program, Monday through Friday, getting that support he needs to continue to live his full life. And so I would say that you are solving a problem. But some of the things that we we can't fix or undo or solve is that they're going to need to step back in at some point as they age, just like when, when I get older. Yeah. Um, and we can't control the rate of children being born with cognitive disabilities. So it's not a population that's declining. So everything we do here, we look at and say, okay, how is... How is this impacting, we're going to impact the next 70 years so we can continue to provide these resources and create, you know, this very independent population that, that is an asset to our community. Perfect, perfect. You guys are doing some, some wonderful and great work there. How would our listeners go about getting a hold of you if they were interested in learning more or, or help an individual or, or even a business that's looking to help? I would say, you know, first place you could you could find us uh, certainly on on the web, and so it's you know larkleycounty.org. dot um, And then we also have we're on Facebook, so that would be one thing. And then they could also send an email into our info at Larkley County, so l a r c l e e c o u n t y dot org, or even give us a call two three nine three three four six two eight five. Angela, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and, and learning a little bit more about Lark. And uh, uh, thank you for what you're doing in the community. You're welcome. I do. I will just put a little bug in your ear if it's okay. Yep. We are also building a state-of-the-art commercial culinary a training kitchen here on our campus, and that's designed to feed uh, the the food service industry here in Southwest Florida with wonderful, diversified, enthusiastic uh, employees. So you will definitely be, you know, the community is definitely going to be hearing more about that, and we are super excited. So I just wanted to share that. I love that. That is great news. Congratulations on that. Angela, you have a wonderful day, and we will see you out in the community soon. Thank you so much. You as well. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Estero. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpastero.com. That's gnpastero.com. Or call 239-296-2621.